Good afternoon. This is Out of My Mind with Jenny Lyles. Today I'm going to be talking about using the game Mary Shag Kill as a relationship metaphor. I'm going to spend a little time letting you look at my notes. Let's start at the top and go down so that you have an idea of what we're going to talk about if you ever want to pause that and look at that later. Some notes before I start. Um, some announcements. I am offering hand-colored postcards until May 4th to anybody who signs up to be a new patron at the $5 level or above. This right here is one that I'm going to hand paint. If you heard a cat in the background, she's upset that I'm talking to you and not to her, and she can just get over it. She may decide to see what's up, and you may see her pretty face here in a moment. Also, if you go to 4 dot responsive llc dot com or look at any of the articles that I've written about uh, mental health at the social justice nexus you will see the fundraiser I am doing for my best friend who needs a heart transplant and needs now just under nineteen thousand more dollars in order to be approved on the transplant list on May 1st, my Out of the My Mind website will migrate to OOMM.live. And right now, if you use that, it will take you to the current website. It will be in reverse starting in May. I also have an Out of My Mind Facebook group. The link is in the right-hand column of oomm.live and you can join after answering a few questions. It is a moderated mental health support group. All right, now let's get started on Mary Shag Kill. We all know how this game goes. You pick three celebrities or three characters in a movie or whatever and you say, ah, which one of these would you marry? Which one of these would you shag? And we all know what shag means when you're not British. And which one of these would you kill? Um, this is an old game. It's a lot of fun to play. And of course, nobody actually means kill. Let's get that straight right off the bat. We mean both in the game and when I'm talking right now, I'm sorry, I've got a bit of a cold, which is why I'm not at my office today, which is why I'm at home. So I'm going to cough. <coughs> now, what we mean is that we're going to get rid of that relationship. And I started realizing a few weeks ago that Mary Shag Kill is an ideal metaphor for how to do relationship triage. And so I'm going to take it apart. And I'm going to put it back together, and then we're going to use a couple examples. And since Game of Thrones starts Season 8 next weekend, we'll probably take a look at some characters from Game of Thrones for this. Okay? Uh, first, again, this is a metaphor. Do not actually kill anyone. We are killing relationships. Now, what we're trying to figure out is where somebody fits in your life. So... Let's say we want to decide who is somebody to marry. Again, this is a metaphor, so we're not specifically talking about intimate partnerships. What we are talking about is close friendships and close partnerships. So whether or not that there's a sexual element, is this person close enough to me that I can call them a good supportive friend? I uh, went looking for some words that we want to attach to people that we want close to us. Empathy came up over and over again in similar words like compassion and kindness. Um, reciprocal, somebody who gives to you sometimes before they get from you. Uh, somebody who is trustworthy, loyal, dependable, somebody you can rely on. Somebody who is self-confident, a good listener, non-judgmental. These are all important things. Somebody you enjoy being with. 
even with all of that, if that person is somebody you don't enjoy being with, don't get into intimate with them. And I don't mean necessarily in the sexual way. I mean both ways. Don't get intimate with somebody who you don't enjoy. So here's a, something that I ask people in their first sessions when they come to visit me. I say, I want you to imagine, now I live in Independence, Missouri, and my office is about a half mile from my home. So I want you to imagine for a second that you're in my office and I'm looking at you. And I say, I want you to imagine it is miserable weather. I mean, awful. I'm talking mid-November, 33 degrees, just cold enough to be raining nastily and not quite sleet. Awful, miserable weather. It's 11 o'clock at night. And for whatever reason, you are returning from, say, Liberty, Missouri, which is approximately a 30, 40 minute drive, depending on what part of Liberty you're coming from. Now, I want you to imagine that just north of the Missouri River on 291, you get a flat tire. And that would suck. But you have your cell phone on you. And for just this moment, I want you to imagine that every single person you know is old enough to drive is capable of driving, has a drivable car, and has the evening off. We're just imagining for the moment that everybody you know is able to help you, okay? Now, of those people able to help you, how many, if you were to call them on your phone, would run to your house or run to their house and grab you a jack because somebody took the jack out of your car because that never happens, and run it to you so that you could change your tire. That is what I'm calling the Mary group. Those are the supportive people. Those are the people you can rely on, even if they give you a hard time, even if they grumble at you and groan at you, if they lug themselves out of bed at 11 o'clock at night in the middle of a miserable storm to go help you, you can count on them, okay? So that's the Mary group. Now I want you to imagine the shag group. Now, you do not actually have to have sexual intercourse with somebody for them to be in the shag group in this triage. What we are talking about is people you enjoy being with, but that you don't necessarily want to trust with most things. You won't necessarily trust them with your secrets uh, where you're not the same as other people. You know, if you're a geek, you don't want to let them know you're a geek, maybe. Or if you are somebody who's gone through some t tough stuff, they don't need to know this, but they're great to go to a movie with, they're great to hang out with, they're great to go to a ball game with. You know, oops, sorry, apparently the cat and dog are about to play the wild rumpus, so if you hear some background noise, this is what a Mary really looks like. Oh, my apologies, wrong cat, this is Kill. Um, hi, Danny. Danny would like to kill Lady Day because uh, she doesn't think dogs deserve to live. She's kind of a a bit semi-feral cat. But Lady's best friend is Scout, and they have a very close, affectionate relationship that involves a lot of chase. Anyway, back to Shag, now that the cat and dog are done giving me a jump scare. Um, the people in this group are going to be fun to be with. They're going to have a sense of humor that you enjoy and that you share. They're going to have interests that you share. Um, I belonged for a very long time to a knitting group that was a bit of a raunchy knitting group, and it was a lot of fun for a lot of years. I grew out of that knitting group because there were some issues with um, the nature of my job and some of the people in the group, but while I was there, I had a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, the people... In this group, this middle shag group, are going to be non-judgmental. They're not going to go home the next morning and brag to everybody about you. They're going to be happy that you ha spent time with them and happy to spend time with you again and glad to have time in between sometimes. So most people you meet are probably going to start out in this shag group somebody who seems interesting enjoyable 
Um, not necessarily somebody you want to share deep secrets with, but somebody that you want to spend some time with. I'm going to have a little fun with this color here. Um, finally, there's kill. And again, we're talking about killing the relationship. We are not talking about killing a person. Now, the people in the kill category are pretty easy to spot. They're the ones who think you or people like you are not as good as other people. That you are fundamentally wrong. You are fundamentally broken. You are fundamentally less than the people like this person. For instance, racists, sexists, homophobes, uh, transphobes, people who think that an immigrant is necessarily bad or evil. Those people are probably people you don't want in your life, especially if you belong to one of those categories. Now, under certain circumstances, you might keep them in the shag com conversation, but mostly they'll be in the kill the relationship thing. Other things that you want to get rid of in your life are people who are continually negative, that no matter what you do or say, they have something negative to add to it. Also, people who are all about themselves, narcissists, people whose main song is me, 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 me. You want to get rid of those people too. And when I say get rid of, um, let's be real, sometimes you have to interact with people you'd rather not. I mean that you curtail that relationship as much as you can. You block them on social media if you can, and if you can't, you mute them or you ignore them somehow. You work with them so you stick straight to business and you have no conversations that aren't ex strictly about that sort of thing. Um, if you are in an actual intimate relationship with one of those people and suddenly realize that they shouldn't have even been a shag, let alone a Mary, and now you need to kill the relationship, you need to start working on that. Now, I am not going to ever say leave the relationship immediately because I don't know your circumstances. You do what feels safe to you because safety is always paramount when leaving relationships. Um... Again, you want to kill the relationship with people who bring you down, people who don't have anything nice to say, people who bring out the worst in you. If you find yourself arguing 24-7 with those people, you need to kill that relationship. It's not healthy for you, even if it was fun for quite a while. Now, people move up and down in these categories all the time. That is a part of human nature. So... Let's say that you just started a new job. Oh, I've already used this color. I'll use a different one. You just started a new job at hmm, a pizza joint, okay? You're, hmm, you're a cook. And you meet the other cooks. And one of them is pretty clearly in the kill category. Uh, they seem to be grumpy all the time. They... You know, they don't have anything nice to say about anybody. And this is like your first week of work. And everything they have to say is, you know, they're exhausted, they're tired, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, I don't want anything to do with this person. They're negative. Then you find out that the reason they were like that, that first week you met them, is because they were caring for somebody very, very ill. And after working eight hours at work, they were going home and doing caretaking duties for another eight hours. All of a sudden, that person just shifted, didn't they? They've probably gone to, hmm, let's put them in the shag ca category, or at least the potential shag category. This doesn't mean you're going to have sex with them again. It means that maybe you might want to go out and have drinks after work. And if you don't drink, you might go have coffee after work. Either one's fine. So, uh... That person obviously shifted. Now you have another person in that group, and they are just so much fun. They're hilarious. They're cracking jokes all day, and you're having a wonderful time with them. And all of a sudden, you realize that they're making fun of somebody with every single joke they're making. I mean, 
We're not talking about public figures here, people with power. We're not talking about people who can control what they do. We're talking about people being made fun of for what they are and who they are. People being made fun of because they struggle to learn. People who are made fun of because of their weight. People who are made fun of because of their sexual orientation. People who are made fun of because of their gender identity. All of a sudden you've decided this person, I don't care how funny they were with those first jokes, are not really funny. What they are is mean and mean people pretty consistently go in that kill category. So you start distancing yourself at work. You don't laugh at your, their jokes. You just kind of stay out of their way. Now what about that Mary category? Let's suppose that you have a third coworker back in that kitchen with you. This is the dishwasher. And this dishwasher doesn't speak a lot of English. They're fresh from mm, Guatemala, okay? And this dishwasher sees that you're really struggling. And he takes a little time out of his work, which is not inconsequential work, and decides to help you with your tasks. Say he's getting some pie crust prep for you, or I don't know, I haven't worked in the kitchen of a pizza place, although I used to wait tables at a pizza hut generations ago. But this guy, when you sit down, he listens. When you're at the lunch break together, he's thoughtful, he's kind, he never pushes for anything other than just a good conversation. He gets on the phone in between uh, on his own breaks and you hear him talking to his family and making sure that he picks everything up that needs to be picked up on the way home. And you discover that he's been feeding kittens out in the back alleyway. Okay, this guy, he's probably a Mary. And I don't mean necessarily, again, that you would marry him. I mean that this would be somebody worth potentially trusting with more information about yourself and more intimacy of some variety. Now, we always have those complications in work environments. You know, is this truly going to be an intimate relationship because it is work? Or is it going to be something that's going to be a friendship that kind of borders on the intimate? Those are always things that, you know, take time to develop and you always want to be going very carefully. My best friend Kathy started out as a work friendship. We discovered we both liked crafting. We started talking about that. Then we discovered we had similar tastes in music. We started talking about that. Then we started going to trainings together and as we started going to trainings together we discovered that we really had a lot in common about the way we saw the world and what was important in the world and what was valuable to us, which isn't surprising. We're both social workers, so you know, that's a good start anyway. But anyway, I wanna ask you for a second before I get done, because we're just about time to close this off here. And like I said, I will finish this up and it will be for somebody who signs up on my Patreon at patreon.com, L-I-L-E-S. Um, that's a backslash before patreon.com, backslash L-I-L-E-S. I want you to think in your life, what are the must-haves that you want in somebody that is going to be in the Mary category? Now, for me, remember I said I was going to go to Game of Thrones? For me, a Mary category might be hmm, somebody like Jamie Lannister. Now, go ahead, don't laugh, but look at how he loved that woman, no matter what she did, for years and years and years. In fact, he was a bit of a potato that way, wasn't he? So, Jamie Lannister might be on that Mary list. Cersei Lannister, oh yeah, she's pretty consistently on that kill list. There is nothing pleasant about her. She is not supportive to anyone. Despite loving her children, she did a terrible job of raising her oldest. And uh, despite uh, loving her brother, she's used him repeatedly. So, uh, yeah, she's definitely on. Let's kill that relationship. 
And in the case of Game of Thrones, you might actually say, let's go ahead and kill her because she's doing an awful evil, a lot of evil in the world. But fortunately, that's fiction and we don't have to deal with that. <sighs> so, the shag category? Hmm. Well, there's Jon Snow. Is he fun, though? Hmm. Jon Snow, I mean, I imagine Kit Harrington's a blast, but Jon Snow, he strikes me as a bit of a wet blanket. So, Egret? Absolutely. John had the right thing going on when he decided Egret was worth it. Anyway, the questions. What are your must-haves in an intimate relationship? Whether this is a sexual relationship or whether this is a relationship of friends. What are your must-haves? What are your must-nots? What are some things that if you found out about a person... That would be the done list for any relationship, whether it's a work relationship or a uh, friendship or hmm, shagging. What are the things that would be, that's it, I'm done, I'm out of here. Are there people in your life that need to change categories? If there are, what are you going to do about it? I'm not telling you you have to change anything right now. I'm saying think about it. I'm saying decide what is important in your relationships. I'm going to finish this off later. And I'm going to show you one more time all this nifty stuff I wrote. Just my little scribbles about what we were talking about today. And as you can see, yes, the other page was executive function versus habit which was the last one I did. And you can find those on my YouTube channel. Um, you Google Out of My Mind on YouTube, or you can go to my Patreon or to oomm.live, and you will have links to the YouTube page from either of those places. Thank you very much. Remember that half of everything I earn through PayPal or Patreon uh, or the ad revenue on any of my websites goes to Kat, for Kathy's heart. Um, up to 50% of what I make, uh, let me scratch that, 50% of what I make until she raises the full $20,000 she needs for heart. And after that, up to 500, half of what I make from those sources. Thank you again. It's a wonderful spring day here in Independence, Missouri. I'm surrounded by birds, cats, and dogs. And I hope your day is wonderful. And I'm going to go lie down now because, frankly, I'm not feeling well. Talk to you all later. And remember, patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S. Thank you.